This guy made the world's most popular mobile game. It made him into a millionaire, but also ruined his life. Almost 10 years after the game's release, it still haunts him. Let's find out why. Meet Dong Nguyen, a programmer from Hanoi, Vietnam. In 2013, Dong spent his days programming location devices for taxis and making video games whenever he had free time. Mobile games were especially interesting to him, but he felt as if they were too complicated and busy. As a result, he founded a video game company called Dot Gears and got to work making his own games. His first mobile game, Shuriken Block, was about as simple as it could get. Block shurikens from hitting people by tapping the shurikens when they appear. You have three lives, and every time someone gets hit, you lose a life. But Dong wanted to go even simpler. That's when he dreamed up the idea of Flappy Bird. Tap anywhere on the screen to make the bird fly up, and don't hit the big green pipes. It was the perfect mobile game. You could learn how to play in less than 30 seconds, but it could take hours, maybe even days of time to become skilled at. The average player could barely get a score higher than 10, so it it was perfect to be played in short bursts of time, like when commuting or waiting in line. And the game was completely free. Kind of like how pressing the like button on this video is completely free. Anyway, combine all that with nostalgic Nintendo-inspired graphics, and Dong had an absolute home run. But it kind of flopped. In Flappy Bird's first few months, it received almost no downloads. It took five months before the first tweet about it was ever made. The tweet simply said, F Flappy Bird. The game seemed pretty much dead on arrival, and the only person to ever tweet about it seemed to hate it. But somehow, just a month after that tweet, Flappy Bird started seeing some impressive growth. It was receiving thousands of downloads every day, seemingly out of nowhere. Before the end of December, it was one of the top 50 games on Apple's App Store. By the end of January, it hit rank one. Soon after, popular YouTuber PewDiePie made a video about the game, causing it to receive another massive surge of downloads. By the start of February, the game had over 50 million downloads, earning Dong $50,000 a day through the advertisements that would display at the top of the game. Now, how could this happen? To this day, Dong and really everyone else doesn't know for sure. It's the same way games like Minecraft blow up without any advertising and how Among Us took years before it was discovered. Regardless, Dong was on top of the world. He had accomplished every independent game developer's biggest dreams, but he was absolutely miserable. At first, Dong loved the success of Flappy Bird. He used his newfound fortune to do two things, purchase a new Mac and take his friends out for dinner. Dong is a very quiet person who tends to keep to himself and, as you could see, doesn't spend much. As a result, he didn't even tell his parents about the game despite still living with them. They found out about his success when the local news began reporting on it. But what most people didn't realize is the more popular Flappy Bird became, the more Dong's misery increased. The media was reporting about Flappy Bird nearly non-stop. First, you had traditional news media who were obsessed with the addictive nature of the game. People all over the world were playing and trying to beat their friends' high scores, even if that meant hours of doing nothing but Flappy Bird. News News outlets would claim that the game was dangerously addictive and to avoid it like the plague. Games journalists also seemed to hate this game with a passion. They called it lazy, accused Dong of using ripped assets from Super Mario games, and used pretty much every excuse they could to tear him down. There were even rumors floating around that he paid for fake reviews and downloads to boost the game to its success. Even when Dong turned off his computer, he couldn't escape. I mentioned earlier that the local news in Vietnam had ran a story about Flappy Bird. That story was just the beginning. Soon after, his face would appear all over Vietnamese newspapers and television. Reporters and paparazzi began showing up to his house and wouldn't leave. But all of that abuse was nothing compared to the messages he received on social media. Players had begun tweeting Dong about how addicted to the game they were. He received messages from school teachers and parents about how their kids wouldn't stop playing, which sounds more like a parenting problem to me. But when people began tweeting him horrifying things like this, Dong began to think that he was actually hurting people and felt burdened with guilt. In actuality, whoever made that tweet was hopefully joking, but Dong took it seriously. In an interview with Rolling Stone, he showed the interviewer some of the worst messages. People claimed that they had lost their jobs, a mother had stopped talking to her kids, and my favorite, 13 kids at my school broke their phones because of your game, and they still play it because it's addicting like crack. If 13 kids broke their phones over Flappy Bird, they have much bigger problems than just video games. But Dong believed them, because when he was a kid, he struggled with video game addiction. He failed tests in high school because he played Counter-Strike instead of studying. In actuality, like I said earlier, a lot of these tweets and messages were probably just weird jokes that Dong didn't understand. After all, Dong is from Vietnam and English wasn't his first language, so it was probably difficult to discern when people were joking or not. For a while, he spent all day every day responding to hundreds of tweets criticizing him and his game. You could tell by what Dong started tweeting in late January that all this negativity was really starting to weigh on him. He wasn't able to sleep, focus, or even go outdoors. As a result, on February 8th, he 
made a big decision. He would be removing Flappy Bird from the App Store and Google Play Store in 22 hours. From the time of that tweet to the game's removal, it received over 10 million downloads. In total, Flappy Bird had been downloaded 90 million times before its deletion, but now Flappy Bird's saga was over. Or was it? Don continued to receive hate about Flappy Bird, but this time it was for removing the game. People went as far as sending him death threats, telling him to leave up the game. Rumors spread that Dong wasn't removing the game because of its addictive nature or all the attention, but that he was being sued by Nintendo. It got so crazy that Nintendo had to issue a statement saying that they weren't suing. As time went on, people became so desperate to play this game that those with copies of it even began trying to sell their phones and tablets on eBay for thousands of dollars. And people were actually buying them. Although eBay did delete most of the listings before they could actually be shipped out. Regardless, Dong felt relieved to have most of the attention off of him, because a new storm was brewing in the background. Whenever something becomes popular, imitations always follow. And in Flappy Bird's case, imitations followed like a flock of birds. No, I, I can do better. 10 flocks of birds. Basically, what I'm trying to say is there were a lot of imitations. After the original was taken down, a new Flappy Bird clone was being uploaded every 24 minutes. 10 of the top 100 games on the App Store were Flappy Bird clones. You had games like Floppy Bird, Tappy Bird, Flappy Turd, Flappy Cat. You get the point. There were a lot. It got so bad that Apple and Google had to start rejecting any new clones. Then something very strange happened. Dong started tweeting again in March saying that Flappy Bird would be returning, but not anytime soon. It would be a new and improved version that he said would be less addictive. If you ask most people, this never actually happened. Flappy Bird was never re-released. But it did re-release. Sort of. Flappy Bird's family was released exclusively for the Amazon Fire TV on August 1st, 2014. Essentially, it was regular Flappy Bird, but with new multiplayer modes and and for some reason, these strange ghosts that protect eggs. With the re-release out of the way, Dong had bigger plans for his game company. He had already quit his job after Flappy Bird's original success, and a team of people he assembled started working on new games. Over the next few months, we saw the release of Swing Copters and Swing Copters 2, and later in 2017, he helped develop Ninja Spinky Challenges. Since then, Dong has sort of drifted back into the shadows. All of his games are gone from the App Store, and the ones on Google Play haven't been updated in almost two years. Since since the release of Ninja Spinky Challenges, he's also only had two public appearances. During his latest one in November of 2019, he visited with students at his old university for a few hours. He talked about how with Flappy Bird, he exchanged maturity for success, and even though he has over a million dollars, he isn't ready to retire. Instead, he's using his money for good and funding some of the university students' projects. Meanwhile, he's also working on another game with his company. I'm hoping that maybe one day we'll see another one of Dong's games at the top of the App Store.